Hey, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Chris Charbonneau, uh, so it's publisher of Fish Talk Magazine. And coming on right now is uh, our angler in chief, Mr. Lenny Rudo. Lenny, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing pretty well. It's a little soggy day today. Um, but uh, other than that, I think it's, uh, everything's going all right. Um, Lenny, what are we talking about today? Ooh, we got all kinds of good stuff today. We are going to talk about catching both rockfish and catfish on opening day. We got opening day coming up, people. And of course, everybody wants to go out and do that sustenance fishing. It's going to be good here real soon. All right, cool. Um, I don't have really any major updates to share with anybody. I just want to say um, thank you very much for joining us. And Lenny, I'm just going to toss it right over to you. All right. Well, hey there, people. Welcome to another episode of Live with Lenny. Yes, I'm going COVID crazy too. I know we all are, but guess what? Striper season is about to open up. It's this close. You can just taste it, can't you? And we're going to talk about today some ways you can get in on both the rockfish season and at the same time also catch catfish. You might think it can't be done, but it definitely can. But before we jump up, uh, jump into it, people, we want to say thanks. Okay, we want to give a quick shout out from Fish Talk to the folks over at Riverside Marine. Okay, um, you know they've been supporters of Fish Talk for a long time. We really appreciate what they do, um, and um, you know we want to say thank you. We absolutely can't bring you Fish Talk and the magazine and all the things that we do without the supporters of adver advertisers like Riverside. I'll give you the, the, the nutshell scoop here. We talked to Matt from Riverside. There you go. Oh, our sponsors for the evening, Riverside and, and Fish and Hunt Maryland. We're going to talk about them a little later. But uh, we wanted to get Matt on here because Riverside is a little bit of a unique organization. And look at this. We already got comments coming in. Riverside is great to work with. Hey, there's Matt. Thanks for joining us, Matt. I got, you know, the first question I wanted to ask you, what makes Riverside different? What are you guys all about? We're all about our customers. We've been doing this for 44 years. It's my family's business. I'm third generation. We love our customers. We take care of our customers, plain and simple. And you know, people know it. When you walk around at the boat shows and you talk to folks and you mention Riverside, they go, oh, Riverside. You know, anybody who's ever dealt with you folks knows that that's what you're all about. That you guys really do go the extra mile on the customer service. And uh, you know, before we get into the fishing stuff, we're going to get there real quick, folks. But before we get there, I wanted to mention one boat in specific because, you know, I think you know what boat I'm talking about. It stole my heart last year. Uh, I, I saw you. You were drooling on it at the Baltimore show. Yes. That, and what, why don't you tell us what that model is? This is the 267 OE. We uh, debuted this thing actually at St. Michael's. Uh, what was it, last summer, right? I think you were there. Yes, absolutely. And that's where this picture is from. We took that boat out fishing all day long. And you know the thing that grabs me about this picture is if you look at it closely in the back, that's actually two people, someone standing behind me. That's me in the blue shirt. There were five of us on that boat fishing. Five of us casting for rockfish. And we had all the elbow room in the world. That's a big boat. It's 26 feet. It's got a 9-2 beam. But what's amazing about it, I mean, it, it kills it in the chop, but you can go into 18 inches of water. I mean, it's kind of a go-all place to do all things. It's got a second tower option. You can put that Yamaha 425 on the back and really have a machine. It's a fun ride. It's a fun boat. Uh, I love it to death. Awesome. I do, too. And you're right, man. I was going all over that thing. That, that <laughs> boat really grabbed me. That boat grabbed me. All right, well, let's I jump bet. into the fishing, okay? Let's, Chris, why don't we get right into the fishing goodies here? And thank you, Matt, for coming on with us. Thank you, really guys. Appreciate it. And I know you're going to stick around because you probably want to do some of this too, don't you? I'm going to be watching. Don't worry. I, I, I'm, just, gonna be I'm taking notes. Opening day, are you going to be fishing? Of course I will. Uh, I knew it. All right, well, Chris, Thanks. can you take us to slide number one here? Okay, so this is the slide we used to promo this piece. See, here's the thing, folks. Historically, everybody fishes for rockfish in the early spring by trolling. Works great, no problem. But you can definitely get them chumming. And it's something I really like to do because it allows you to fish for them with light gear. Um, and these days, we got so many big catfish roaming around the bay that at the same time as you're doing this, in pretty much the mouth of all the tributaries, 
right over the line where you're in the main stem bed, you can still get into the catfish. In some places better than others, but a whole lot of them. Uh, go ahead and flip us to the next slide, Chris, would you? This is the mouth of the Magathy. And this is a great example of a spot you can get into tons of fish in the early spring. Those pictures uh, were on my brother's boat from opening day last year out the mouth, at the mouth of the Magathy. We were, um, we were in one of the arrows on the far right. I don't know if it was one, two, or three. Right along the edge where it drops from like 15, 16 feet down to 20, 22 feet. Great kind of area to do this. All right, now go ahead to the next one. So uh, key feature of fishing like this, it's not at all like summer or fall chumming for rockfish. First thing is your chum bucket. Arrow number one points to a swivel clip along the line. What I'm clipping on there is a two-pound lead weight. This chum bucket is going all the way down to the bottom. Then I'm bringing it up about a foot, cleaning it off so it jerks as the boat goes up and down. But that chum is right down there on bottom. Second thing I wanted to show, number two, you can see the line that attaches this bucket is tied both through the top and the side in two different places. Reason for that is once you send that chum bucket down to the bottom and you can't see it, if you only tie it off to the top in one place, uh, that top can pop off and all your chum goes rolling out and then you're done. No good. So make sure you tie it both at the top, uh, tie the top at, at both sides there so it holds it on. Number three, you can see the quarter sized holes that I've cut in this bucket. There's probably 10 of them around the sides. And what I do is I take one of these buckets at the beginning of the year, I punch the holes and then I save that bucket. Okay. What I do is at the end of the day of chumming, I wash it out and I throw it up forward in a locker in the boat. And then the next time I'm ready to go, I can take a fresh fr uh, frozen chum bucket. I can pull the top off and just invert it onto the top and then take that pre-prep chum bucket, slide it right over it, clip the top one, and it's ready to go. I don't have to bother with punching more holes. Um, what do we got here? Is that standard Menhaden chum? Yes, it is. That is just ground bunker. That's all it is. No secret oysters in there. That is it. Oh, and I also see um, we got a question about the Lower Bay in Virginia. So Virginia did modify its season quite a bit. It, it's not a trophy season. It doesn't start for a few more weeks. It's later on down the line. Oh, there we go. Uh, but you, you can go. It's a slot. It's a slot season. You can go for slot fish. Um, I, I'm going to back up and say that all the rules and regs, whatever we may talk about, check before you go. They've been changing so rapidly. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. It's it's like you kind of need a law degree to go fishing these days, right? Uh, kind of drives everyone a little nuts, but you got to check on it. You really got to check on this stuff because it is constantly changing. Um, all right, let's go on to the next slide here, Chris. And uh, I put this one in here because uh, the baits are bunker. Normally, you can get fresh bunker in most areas. It might be a little tough this year with the situation. Uh, you know, that has, that's a TBD. Frozen bunker works okay too, but this is the kind of chunk you want to cut. You want, to, you want a nice big chunk of bunker. All right, go ahead to the next one. And this, this next slide is imperative, people. This is, this is make or break. What you want to see here in the left hand, that's the front part of the bunker, okay? In the right hand, that's the gut ball. Why am I talking about the gut ball? Dig that gut ball out. That gut ball is super duper important, okay? When I'm fishing for trophy rockfish, one bunker equals one bait because I will not put a bait down there on the bottom without that gut ball. Added bonus, guess who else loves that gut ball? Catfish. Catfish. Um, that gut ball is really good bait. So uh, go ahead and flip us to the next one, Chris, the one that shows the bait kind of hanging over the outboard. Um, and that'll show a fully baited hook for everybody. While Chris is bringing that up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the rig because the one he's getting shows you a baited hook. Uh, of course, circle hooks are now mandatory. Um, key factor, a six-shot circle hook is really small for what we're talking about here. It's even small in the summer season. You really want an eight-shot or a ten-shot, a big, big, big circle hook because what happens is with those smaller circle hooks, the rockfish will gulp them all the way down. They'll have them in their stomach before you start reeling, and you will still end up gut hooking some. So you want to get that 8 knot or 10 knot. You want a pretty big hook. Um, you want to tie that onto a 30 or 40 pound fluoro leader. 
Do you really need fluoro in the bay? People ask me that all the time. Do you really need fluorocarbon for rockfish in the Chesapeake where the water's kind of murky? Uh, you know, visibility might not be as huge a deal. Truth of the matter is, I don't know, but I put it on there every dang time because do I want to take this much of a chance that I'm going to not get a bite because I cheaped out and didn't use fluoro? No, of course not. So I actually got a rig right behind me here. I'm going to grab it real quick. And... Uh, Oops, kick the ukulele. There's the circle hook right there, right? I'm putting on the gut chunk first, so it's back up here, and then I'm threading the tip of the hook through that piece of meat. Here's my leader, right? Oops, sorry, went the wrong way. Here's my leader. I tie a uh, hillbilly bimini in the end there, right? Just give it a loop, clip it onto a swivel, and then I've got an egg sinker, so it slides on the line. So when a fish takes this, I can give it line. Now, fact of the matter is, with catfish, I normally don't let them take line. But with those big rockfish, the, the trophy size rock, I want to let them take line. Those are smart fish. Um, I want to let them get a little bit of line with no resistance. So I still like that egg sinker. Fish finder rig also works perfectly for that. Not a problem. Now, here's the close-up of the hook. You can see it there. It's just what I was talking about. You've got the, uh, the gut hunk on there first and then the meat hunk. I would even look at this particular hook. And I would say you went too deep in the meat, you went more point exposed. Okay, it's really important to have the hook point on those circle hooks. Really important to have that point exposed. All right, Chris, go ahead to the next slide. And uh, meanwhile, I forgot to say, folks, if you have any questions as we're talking, type them right into the uh, comments and uh, Chris will get them up on screen. Don't hesitate. Um, so uh, next slide here we got. This is a kind of a very rough Lenny Rudo did Wait, it on the computer. It's high tech. What's that? It's high tech. It's high tech, yeah. That's that's me on Photoshop doing something very in a very rudimentary fashion. But I just wanted to kind of show how you've got the gut hunk on the right up the shank, and then you've got a whole lot of hook exposed after the meat hunk. That will get the fish. All right. We can slide on to the next one here. Here we got a catfish. And I put this in here. This, this again, this is on my brother's boat. That's my brother, Steve. This was uh, last year at the mouth of the Magathy. And you can actually see the gut hunk hanging out of that catfish's mouth. Actually, I just noticed for the first time, you can also see the, uh, the uh, sinker up the line. Chris, if, uh, if we can get the fish hunt slide up, this would be a good time. And in the meantime, I see Jeff Sykes. Uh, guy, no guy, I fish with great guy. This guy is a trolling madman. Okay, I don't even know why you're paying attention to this chum and talk. I know you're going to be trolling. He asks, Do you protect your knot with a glass bead from the sinker? I don't. I find that with this rig, it's really fine. I totally get that some people do that. Um, I can't say I've ever had a problem with it, and I've always kind of used it this way, so I don't put that extra bead in there. Um, if you're worried about that, I would point out that fish finder rig, again, is a, is a great rig for it. Um, but truth be told, using this kind of gear, what I'm using here is a 17-pound class spinning rig um, with mono line. I like mono with bait. Um, I firmly believe that with braid, that sensitivity that you get, the fish also gets. So whenever I'm using a bait that the fish is going to mouth before it necessarily you know, takes it all away, I'm using a mono line so he doesn't feel me on the other end. Um, with a 17 pound mono going to that 30, 40 pound leader. Um, I've, I can't think of any breakoffs I've had at the knot. I'm, actually, I'm sure it's happened, but can't specifically remember any times like that. Um, what I wanted to get into was the fact that, uh, fish hunt Maryland is fishing and hunting. Maryland is another, uh, supporter of fish talk. Again, we really appreciate that. And I wanted to, to bring it out because, um, they helped us out with creating a fantastic article on fishing specifically for the big blue cats that ran in the last edition. You can go online, you can go to fishtalkmag.com, click on the read the current edition. You can check out that article. It was called tank battle. And we get really deep into how to fish for these catfish, which is something that they want to help promote. Cause we all, you know, as Marylanders, we want people going out and catching these big blue cats. Uh, they are invasive. In some areas, they have become incredibly dominant. And um, there it is, Fish Hunt Maryland. And 
Um, Fish Hunt Maryland also has a great selection of articles. If you go to their website, you can click on and you can check out some of the different options in the state of Maryland um, for, for going for these fish. Um, you know, um, they have, the, the blue cats in particular have just exploded. Their population has just exploded. And this is one of the reasons why I like this method of fishing right now. You can go out and fish for the trophy stripers. Uh, and, you know, in all likelihood, in some areas, you're going to just constantly be catching catfish. You'll load the boat with them. So it's a great way to do it. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to overpressure our rockfish. And Chris has this next slide up here. That was awesome timing, Chris, because I was just about to segue into the fact that, um, you know, while we love the fact that we have a chance to catch some stripers, we don't want to overpressure this fishery right now. Uh, it, it is have you know, there are some difficulties with the striper numbers. And um, one of the things that I like about chumming for stripers as opposed to trolling for them is that a lot of these fish that you get when you're chumming, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm not the science guy, I don't know why, for whatever reason, you get a lot of really big males. And if you look at this picture, that was actually a 46 and a half inch fish. I know it doesn't look like it. Shame on me, big camera angle, right? But you can see it's really long and super skinny. It almost looked kind of deformed in its shape, right? It, it's so skinny. That is a super old, super big male. Males generally don't even get that big. Um, Chris, can you go to the next slide? And uh, this is common when you're chumming. This is another one. It's not quite as pronounced. And as you can tell from this picture, my hair is a little darker back then. This is a pretty old picture. Uh, but this is, again, chumming. This was at Love Point. And um, this is just a long, skinny fish. You get a lot of these when you're chumming. I, I don't know why. And for years and years, many years in a row, we never saw any row in any of the fish we were catching. Um, that has changed slightly in the last few years. A couple of the fish that I've taken home have had row in them. I've been bummed to see it. Um, so it's, it's not a 100% kind of thing, but quite often you get these long, skinny males. So if you want to, you know, you want a shot at stripers, you want to take home meat, but you don't want to necessarily overpressure the striper fishery. This spring chumman, man, this is a excellent opportunity to employ this because even if you don't get into the stripers and you probably will but even if you don't you're going to get into catfish it's almost going to be tough to avoid them all right chris we got any questions here we're, we're already past 20 after here i see uh someone caught one trolling a blue cat and and you know what that's funny i actually got two blue cats last year jigging and was like what the heck we shouldn't be catching these fish doing this but I guess they've just become so incredibly populated, it's happening. Um, what else we got here? Do you have a preference for fishing cats on either side of the bay or the shore side? So, Jack, you know, the fact of the matter is, yes, I do. I like fishing the west side, but there's a very simple reason. It's because my boat's on the west side. My brother's boat's on the west side. It's just less running time. Um, I can't tell you that I fish the uh, the Cambridge or Crisfield side as often because it is a farther trip. I can tell you that all the reports that I'm hearing indicate that you're not going to have a shortage of blue cats on the eastern side. Um, now that said, that said, it is a little bit of a stretch to pick one up on the east side in the territory that is legal for trophy rockfish. Like if this was June. You know, I would say fish, you know, in the Cambridge area and you're going to be gold, right? But you can't fish for stripers in the Cambridge area right now. You, you, or you won't be able to for uh, several more weeks yet, uh, really for, for a month. Um, so while it is true that the eastern side is fine for this style of fishing, if you want to actually put a rockfish in the box or have an option of putting a rockfish in the box, you can't do it. Now, I'll tell you this. I have been getting reports of guys who are white perch fishing, um, and this is the Cambridge, Cambridge and up, Cambridge area and up, and they've been catching blue cats lately. So if you want to go out and catch catfish and you don't mind releasing any rockfish you might happen to catch, that would be a great area to give it a shot. I totally love it. Uh, Chris Field, same kind of deal. You're going to want to go up the rivers a little bit. Uh, now, 
Chumming off Love Point, chumming uh, a little bit north of Love Point, off the mouth of the Chester. Now you're starting to get into the Cat area. You're, you're getting into the Both area. Mouth of the Magathy, for sure. Any of the rivers farther north of those areas, you absolutely have a shot. I have not tried out at the mouth of the south or the west this year yet. Uh, I know uh, someone who did who will remain nameless. <clears throat> I won't give away his secrets. He did try for catfish. Uh, outside the river mouths earlier this year and didn't have any luck. Might have been a little too far out. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but if you get right on that line where it's legal to fish for the stripers, but you're right at the river mouth, pretty much all these rivers, you, you should have a shot at them. Uh, in fact, the two blue cats that I caught on jig last year, that was actually out, out of point lookout. So, and we, um, everybody knows pretty much there are a ton of these fish in the Potomac. There, there are a ton of the cats in the Rappahannock. There are a ton of the James. The Rapp and the James actually have blue cat fisheries that are really probably just as good, or in the case of the James, when it comes to trophy fish, even better than that of the Potomac. So, uh, as long as we have, you know, a, a fairly wet spring, you can bet you're going to continue finding those catfish all over the dang place. Hey, Lenny, we've got a question from our buddy again, Mr. Sykes. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, red circle hooks. Oh, wait. We no, got the, we'll question. go to the circle hooks after this one. I'm confused, Chris. Okay. Uh, I heard guys were catching catfish while trolling for rock. Is this true urban legend? Well, we got we got someone on here, Jim Gill. He says he got one last year trolling, and I, I did hear the same thing. I mean, that is I, – I think that's totally true, and after catching them on jigs, I can't say it shocks the heck out of me, you know? There you go. All right. And do circle, red, red circle looks better than metal colored um, circle hooks. All right. Uh, so, gosh, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's one of those things that, like, in order to really find out, you're going to have to spend an entire season fishing red and metal side by side before you can make any kind of claim. And I always like to tell people, when I talk fishing, I am not here to talk about opinion or I think or maybe. I like to talk about what I know. I like to talk about absolute facts that I know. Like when I talked about mono versus braid on a chumming line, I tested that for an entire season. One half of the boat braid, one half of the boat mono. The mono half out caught the braid half uh, two to one. So that, that's not, I don't surmise that. That's something that I really put to the test. I've never put this to the test, so I can't answer it. I can tell you I've used both, and I've never noticed a difference right off the bat. Maybe, maybe not, you know. All right, folks, we got any other questions here? We're, we're approaching the 5.30 hour. And uh, let's see, Red catches me. Yeah, you know, uh, Jeff says, I guess Red just catches me, and and. I, I got to tell you, I, I reach for those hooks too. I, I do, but I, I haven't been able to haven't been able to notice anything there. Um, all right, folks, we're running down to the wire. If you got a last minute question, type it in real quick. But other than that, I want to say thank you for tuning in. I want to say I hope this has been helpful. Uh, send send me an email. Let me know what you would like to hear about. I'll try and work it into the program. You know, with with the difficulties with people picking up fish talk, we're trying to find different ways to stay in touch with people and, and do it, you know, do things like this that hopefully they would like. Uh, again, I'll mention if you haven't read the April edition of Fish Talk yet, go to fishtalkmag.com, upper right hand side. Um, that's funny, it's backwards on the uh, one here on, on the video. Anyway, upper right hand side, it says read the current edition. You can click on it. It'll be a flip book edition is what we call it where each page lays out on one side of the computer screen and you just click to turn the page. So you can still get it, you can still read it, you can still see it. It's a really good edition. Um, it's got a beautiful cover with a big old redfish on it that Nick Long caught. And I feel so bad, <laughs> that poor kid, he hasn't been able to go out and see him in the stores is terrible, but you know, sign of the times. And one more time, we'll give a shout out to Riverside. We'll give a shout out to Fish Hunt Maryland. I wanna tell you, you know, I know the whole advertising thing, ooh, gotta pay the bills, blah, blah, blah. I'm not kidding. When you walk around at a boat show and you find find someone, find people who bought a boat from Riverside, they're like, man, those people took such good care of me. They fixed this. They did that. It was all instant. They got right on it. I mean, it's just, it's kind of amazing. Those are the kind of folks that you want to deal with. They're the kind of folks we want supporting Fish Talk. And same with Fish Hunt Maryland. We love what they do. We love that they're trying to reach out and tell people, hey, fishing in this state is 
awesome. You can go fishing for trout one day in the river uh, out in the mountains. You can go fishing for rockfish the next day in the bay. And then you can jump in the car, drive down to the beach and go tuna fishing. And you know what? That's what it's all about. That's what we're all about. We got the same message. We want to help folks go fishing more and catch more bigger fish. Well, I hope you enjoyed this live with Lenny. Chris, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, absolutely. Lenny, thanks for uh, uh, well, thanks for another live with Lenny, I guess. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And just like Lenny said, uh, please go uh, read the issue online. Um, and if you really want to help us out, share it. Send it to somebody. Say, hey, you got to check this out. Um, that really does uh, do a lot for us. It gets our numbers up. Um, and uh, that's how we will be able to continue to do this uh, going forward. Until then, um, would love it if uh, you guys tuned in again next Thursday, 5 o'clock. It seems to be a good time for everybody. Um, really appreciate uh, everybody attending and asking good questions. Um, we'll be watch, you know, watch us on Facebook for what next week's topic is going to be. And until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, get out there when we can. Thanks. Thanks, Lenny. See you, folks. Don't miss another cool fish talk video. Click below to subscribe.